One technique that we can use to design a digital controller directly in the discrete time domain is the digital root locus. In this video, we define the digital root locus and look at a simple example of how to use it. The problem we address in this video is the following. Suppose we are given an equivalent discrete time plant model and are tasked to design a discrete time controller such that the closed loop system has the desired behavior. We are going to use the digital root locus which plots the closed loop poles for varying controller gain values. The specifications for the performance of the closed loop system should therefore be translated to acceptable locations or acceptable regions in the z-plane for the closed loop poles. We then use the root locus by changing the controller structure and choosing the controller gain such that the closed loop poles lie within the acceptable regions in the z-plane. However, for this video, we only focus on the definition and calculations of the root locus and we look at using the root locus for controller design at a later stage. For the definition of the digital root locus, we start by writing the loop transfer function as a gain k times the product of the factors z minus each zero divided by the product of the factors z minus each pole, where we restrict k to be positive. For this formulation, we assume that the poles and zeros of the loop transfer function are fixed and only the gain k is variable. This means that we assume that the controller structure is fixed and only the controller gain is variable. To calculate the closed loop poles, we first write down the closed loop transfer function, which is given by this expression. When we substitute in our formulation of the loop transfer function, and multiply the numerator and denominator with the product of the pole factors, we get this expression, which is a polynomial over a polynomial. For this formulation of the closed loop transfer function, we can calculate the closed loop poles by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for z. When we take the product of the pole factors to the right hand side and then divide by the product of the pole factors, we recognize the resulting expression as our definition of the loop transfer function, which should be equal to minus 1. We can write minus 1 as the complex number with magnitude 1 and angle 180 degrees plus any integer multiple of 360 degrees. Since the magnitude of the complex number on the left hand side should be equal to the magnitude of the complex number on the right hand side and the angle of the complex number on the left hand side should be equal to the angle on the right hand side, we can set up the following two conditions for the root locus. For a certain complex number z to be a closed loop pole of the system, it has to fulfill the magnitude condition, which says that the magnitude of the loop transfer function, which can be written as the gain k times the product of the magnitudes of the zero factors divided by the product of the magnitudes of the pole factors should be equal to 1. The complex number z should also satisfy the angle condition. It says that the angle of the loop transfer function, which can be written as the sum of the angles of the zero factors minus the sum of the angles of the pole factors, should be equal to 180 degrees plus any integer multiple of 360 degrees. The magnitude and angle conditions allow us to calculate and plot the closed loop poles for varying values of the controller gain. An important thing to note is that the magnitude and angle conditions for the digital root locus is in exactly the same form as that of the continuous time root locus. Essentially, the only difference between the discrete time and continuous time root locus is that the interpretation of the pole locations differ. Let's now work through a simple example to illustrate the concepts. Suppose we are given this equivalent discrete time plant and a controller described by this transfer function. Note that the structure of the controller is specified but not the controller gain. For the first part of this example, we should calculate the location of the closed loop pole with the real part of 0 0.5. For the second part of the example, we should calculate the controller gain for the pole calculated in the first part. We start the first part by writing the loop transfer function 
in the required format, where the gain is a combination of the plant gain and the controller gains. The zero factor and the first pole factor comes from the controller and the second pole factor comes from the plant. We can visualize the setup as shown here. The closed loop pole is given by 0.5 plus an unknown imaginary part. There is a controller 0 at z equal to 0, a plant pole at 0 0.3679 and a controller pole at z equal to 1. The angle of the zero factor can be understood as the angle phi 1 between the real axis and the line connecting the zero with the closed loop pole. The angles of the pole factors theta 1 and theta 2 can be understood in the same way. To determine the unknown imaginary part of the closed loop pole, we use the angle condition. The angle of the loop transfer function is the angle of the zero factor minus the angles of the pole factors, which can be written in terms of trigonometric functions and the unknown value x as shown here. According to the angle condition, this should be equal to 180 degrees. However, there is no analytic way to calculate x, so we use an iterative approach. We start with an imaginary value of x equal to 0 0.5, which clearly does not satisfy the angle condition. When we iteratively decrease the imaginary value, we quickly find the imaginary value that satisfies the angle condition as x equal to 0 0.3434. The complex number z equal to 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3434 is therefore a closed loophole of the system. For the second part of the question, we use the magnitude condition to calculate the controller gain such that the closed loop pole will be at location on the z-plane as calculated in the first part of the question. For the magnitude condition, we calculate the gain times the magnitude of the zero factor divided by the magnitudes of the pole factors where we use this value for z that should be equal to 1. After substituting in the value for z, and some manipulation, we arrive at the controller gain equal to 1.164. A common way to use the root locus for controller design is using software to numerically calculate and draw the root locus. Such software tools usually have the ability to interactively change the controller gain with the resulting closed loop poles being plotted on the root locus. However, it is very useful to be able to plot the root locus by hand. This gives us the understanding of how aspects of the plant and controller influence the location of the closed loop poles, and this understanding helps us to choose appropriate controller structures that would lead to desirable closed loop behavior. There are a number of guidelines for sketching the root locus by hand. Since the magnitude and angle conditions of the discrete time root locus is in the same form as that of the continuous time root locus, we can use the same guidelines for the continuous time root locus to draw the discrete time case. I assume that you are familiar with the guidelines for the continuous time root locus, so I will only remind you of some of the guidelines by using the example system of the previous two pages. We start by plotting the open loop poles and the zero on the z-plane. The locus will move from the open loop poles to either the zero or to infinity as the controller gain increases. There will be a locus on the real axis to the left of an uneven number of poles and zeros, so there will be a locus over here and a locus over here. There are two open loop poles and one zero, so there will be a single asymptote at 180 degrees. We can calculate the first breakaway point from the real axis as 0.66 and the second breakaway point on the real axis as minus 0.66. Putting everything together, as the gain increases, the closed loop poles will move towards each other on the real axis, then break away and move along the top half and bottom half of a circle to another breakaway point and then the one pole will move towards the zero and the other pole will move towards negative infinity. The closed loop poles we calculated for the example on the previous two pages are located at 0 0.5 plus and minus j 0 0.3434.
The process for using the root locus for controller design is usually to first choose the controller structure such that the root locus goes through a desirable region on the z-plane and then choose the controller game to place the closed loop poles in the desirable region.